Hi, you guys. This is Jennifer Pelfini, your Pampered Chef Independent Consultant. And I made a last minute decision this morning to go live. So I am here today to talk to you about the kitchen, see if there's any questions you had from anything I made um, in the past week. I cooked three times live. I don't know if you caught it all, but I used a lot of Pampered Chef products. So I figured I would take this opportunity just to be available since I know I really couldn't be available and I was cooking. And then I figured I would go through some of the products that have transformed my kitchen and I've brought joy into my kitchen and share them with you and do that sort of thing. So, um, but first, coffee. <laughs> I need some coffee. So I'm just gonna make some coffee here while I'm waiting to see if anyone's gonna join. <coughs> And it looks like Julie. Hi, Julie, how are you? So I was just saying, Julie, that I'm going live today just to go through some things in my kitchen, to talk about things that I used in my cooking demos and to see if there's any questions or I can interact with anyone because I really didn't get to interact this week because I was cooking and I was far away from the camera and I needed to focus on my text. My text, my t <laughs> the text, at the task at hand. Sorry guys, I've had no coffee. I literally woke up a half hour ago and I asked to have this slot. So I really have no plan, just to chat with you and to answer questions. Good morning, Tamara, how are you? It's so much fun to be able to actually react. react. I haven't, in, interact, I haven't, I can't talk today. <laughs> I haven't been able to interact with anyone because I've just been cooking and just commenting after. So I was gonna go through, I'm trying not to chop my head off here so I might move the camera around a little bit. Um, like I said, I just decided to do this. I didn't really have a plan for doing this today. So I'm going to just arrange the camera a little bit. And then I'll kind of walk back and forth to the camera to answer questions. So I am making coffee because I need coffee this morning because I haven't had any yet and I just woke up. This is my daughter's chair. I'm just going to move it out of the way. So I thought I would start today just kind of going through our catalog. Our catalog is just about to change because we'll be launching fall products and um, I'm, I can't really disclose what those fall products are yet but I can tell you that they're going to be awesome and you're gonna have your mind blown a little bit because Pampered Chef has been working on just some amazing products to bring into the market to bring into your homes at good prices so I feel like um, being a purchaser of many kitchen items myself like for example I have KitchenAid, I have um, La Creuset, I have all clad, I have all different kinds of stuff in my kitchen. And um, over time that I've collected, and some of it's great, some of it's not, some of it's practical, some of it's not so practical. But what I feel about what's different about Pampered Chef is all their products are um, kind of created and, and, and the mother of invention is necessity, they say. But they work with you know families and they don't just work with chefs to create these products. They actually work with real people in the kitchen like you and me, people that aren't chefs, people that just enjoy being in the kitchen, or people that want to be in and out of the kitchen very quickly, that have families or are busy on the go working. And they take all this feedback and they bring them into these products, which really just makes it a beautiful thing because you get a more user-friendly product in the end, an easier to clean product in the end, and a better cooking product in the end. And I think that's really the big Pampered Chef difference. So when I say we're bringing new revolutionary products to the market, I truly believe it because I've experienced it with some of these products myself. Uh, let me just get my coffee and then we can chat. Um, so our new catalog comes out in the fall and um, it comes out in the next few weeks actually. Um, but in the meantime, we still have our spring summer catalog and there were some great new items that came out this spring and summer. And some of them I really didn't even get to talk about so I figured I would talk to you about them and one is the air fryer so the air fryer actually is a fantastic product um, and it actually has I'm just gonna show you here it actually is an 11 and a half quart air fryer so what this means is you could fit an entire rotisserie chicken in this air fryer which is amazing a four pound one which is a pretty big chicken so that's enough chicken for anybody to eat um, for a family of four probably a family of four. Um, it also comes with a basket for your French fries. I'm just gonna get a spoon for my coffee. Um, and some trays to cook on. And 
this summer, because of um, the situation with shelter in place and um, and a uh, lack of um, amount of products available, this air fryer has been only available to hosts, which is a host exclusive. So I want to let you know about that. So if you host a party with me, you can get this air fryer um, on some offers up to 60% off. I know for a fact uh, for August, for parties that we're having in August, like right now, you could get this air fryer um, as an offer because uh, all of our electronic, our electrics are offered at 60% off for hosts, for, um, for hosts when they hit 650 in party sales. Um, and we'll talk about parties in a minute because I just want to kind of go through our uh, electrics here. So the blender, um, oh, let me just go through a little bit more of the air fryer before I go on. So the great thing about the air fryer is there's eight program settings that give you a consistent, consistent reliable experience. Um, air fry, bake, roast, rotisserie, reheat, dehydrate, custom, and rotate. So you actually can, who's that? Hi Amber, how are you? So we're just doing kitchen talk today. I don't have anything planned to cook. I'm gonna go through a lot of Pamper Chef products and showcase some of the ones that I used in my cooking and then just be here to answer your questions for the next, um, for the next hour because I feel like I didn't get that chance to interact with y'all uh, when I was cooking because I was intense on the cooking part and um, I had a lot to get done in, a, in, in the amount of time that I did, which actually I had extra time. but. Um, I didn't get a chance to interact also because I couldn't see the camera. So now I can see the camera. Um, so back to the air fryer. Um, it's, it's just a fantastic product. And you're going to see something additional with this in the fall that's going to even make you want it even more. So um, the air fryer has a rotisserie front function in it. It's built in. So that's great too. So um, And it's family size. So you can cook so much in there. In fact, I was talking to my friend Kimberly who... Um, my friend Kimberly in Southern California hosted a party. She was one of my first party I hosted back in June. She actually won 780 worth of free products. And the air fryer was one of the ones that she decided to get at 60% off. So she actually used the air fryer the other day and she said it was the most moist chicken she'd ever had, crispy on the outside and cooked to perfection. So I personally don't have the air fryer yet, but it's on my, thing, on my list of um, things to do because right now in my kitchen, I have, you probably can't see, I have a toaster oven air fryer, and I thought that was a great decision for my family because um, I'm tired of a toaster, and I wanted a toaster oven anyway, um, and I wanted the air fryer, but what I, what I the challenge with the air fryer is it is impossible to clean. Okay, I'm not going to say impossible because, I mean, you can clean it, but it is very difficult to clean because you have to get into the air, you have to get in, um, let me just walk over there and show you. You have to open up the door and then you have to like dig your arm in to clean it. And stuff gets on the top and stuff gets on the sides and stuff gets in the back. So it's not easy to clean. It's great as a toaster oven. I love it. It's great as a toaster. Toast our toast up to anything, you know, we want. And I make small batches of food maybe in there. But as an air fryer, it's not a great air fryer. Um, does it air fry? Yes. But... Um, when I look at products to bring into my kitchen, the one thing I need to start thinking about and that I definitely realized with Pampered Chef is I need to think about how easy they are to clean because I'm going to be honest with you guys, I don't like to clean. I'm not good at it. It's not something fun for me to do. I don't enjoy it at all. Um, I mean, sometimes I enjoy cleaning up the kitchen, but that's just kind of satisfaction after cooking sort of a thing. But cleaning things like a toaster oven, not my thing. So um, what I love about this air fryer is that it's easy. You're going to have no problem cleaning it because it's, you know, it's, it's a relatively small thing you can move around. I can't move around that toaster oven. Okay, so I'm going to go through. Now the blender. Now the blender I demoed quite a bit, so I'm so excited. Hi, Donna. How are you? Um, I'm just having kitchen talk today. I didn't have a plan. I literally took this slot about a half hour ago and said I'll go live um, because I didn't get a chance to interact with people, and I love to interact with people, and that's certainly how I run my parties. Um, how I ran my cooking shows here isn't exactly how I run my parties because I'm talking to you and I have an audience, and I couldn't see when I was cooking, so now I'm close to the camera so I can see. So I'm just going to go through the blender a little bit because I did go through the blender, but um, I think it deserves just another... Uh, a go around. So first of all, I'm going to tell you, everyone asks me, is the blender heavy? The blender is not heavy. I don't know how many pounds it is. Let's, I can look, at, look that up for you and tell you how many pounds it is. But it's easy to move. Um, features of this blender that I love is, I love that um, 
that it has a glass pitcher. And why do I love a glass pitcher? Well, first of all, I like to be able to see what's cooking in my blender. I like to see what's happening in my blender. And second of all, glass is easier to clean than plastic. And the reason why glass is easier to clean, with, clean than plastic is because this blender has a heated wash cycle. Okay, so there's electronics, there's electrics, I keep saying electronics, but it's electrics on the bottom of this blender. So you never wanna submerge it in the water or get it um, seriously wet. You want to use the heated wash cycle to clean it. And that's a beautiful thing because I don't know if you've had any other kind of blenders before. I've had, I think five. And my fifth one is out in the garage right now because we're not using it anymore because this is just the dream blender. Um, and the challenge with my blenders has always been that, um, let me get a lift here to put this up higher, is that I can never get them fully clean because stuff always gets caught in the, stuck in the plastic and it's gross. And, um, and there's always all these ridges. You see that? Let me move back a little bit more. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's better. Um, and there's always all these ridges that make things difficult to clean, but with glass, it's not. And there aren't even ridges here. These are just, these aren't ridges on the inside. They're ridges on the outside. So it's easy to get around and you can see here's the blade. Don't worry. It's not going to turn on me because this blender won't go unless the lid is locked. And it tells me that the lid is locked, which I love that safety feature. So I can stick my whole hand in here with the towel and get around there to dry it with no problem at all. Um, like that. Sorry, some, a notification just popped up on my phone. <laughs> Let's campaign to get PC back in the UK. I know you want that blender, Donna. So, um, yeah, and it's, it's super easy to clean. And the heated wash cycle does its thing. It cleans it, you guys. So the other night I did a pasta sauce in here. I ran the heat wash twice because um, the first time I got most of it off and the second time I got everything off. And that was like four minutes. And that was not me cleaning the blender. That was it sitting here in the water doing its thing um, on a cycle, getting to 140 degrees to clean it, which is what the difference is. Um, and that, that's really important to talk about here because when we talk about this blender, we are talking, you have to have the heat on, the lid on to do any of the cycles. When we talk about this blender, we talk about custom heat, we're talking about 100 degrees to 220 degrees that you can set this blender for whatever temperature you want to set it to. And that's not on a cycle. There are cycles that are already have predetermined temperatures and predetermined amount of time to give you the results that you want when you're cooking. Is that, is Donna again? Okay. Um, I have to keep going up close because I can't see exactly that well, but I can see pretty good. Okay, so let me just show you if you could see. I can't tell if you could see that. Can you see that? So these are all the different cycles. So I'm going to cancel that. There's custom blend, which you can do any cycle from speed one to speed nine. I use that for my margaritas at like a two for 30 seconds. And I had gorgeous frozen margaritas like I've never experienced before. There's the smoothie cycle, cancel. There's this, there's the smoothie cycle, which I showed you, um, I think on the first day where you can make a smoothie in a minute. And if a minute isn't good enough for you and you want it to be longer, make it for another minute, no big deal. Hi Gail, how are you? We're just doing kitchen chalk today and I'm right now going through the blender and I'm just taking you through my kitchen and showing you what happens in my kitchen. Um, what I have in my kitchen that's pampered chef. Um, and then this is one I'm really excited about because um, alternate milk, you can make almond milk in here directly. And this does come with, let me just show you. I'm gonna be hopping around the kitchen a little bit today, you guys. So it comes with a uh, strainer bag. So after you make your almond milk, you could strain it to get the almonds out. I haven't made almond milk myself, so I don't know, but that's what this bag is for. Um, it has a grind setting. This I can't wait to use. I'm just waiting for my peanut butter to be done and my jelly to be done so I can make my own peanut butter and jelly. You put peanuts in here and, and the grind setting is two minutes and 20 seconds and you've got your own peanut butter, your almond butter, your cashew butter, whatever kind of butters you want. This is your grind setting um, and grind other things too as well. The heated wash, I went through that with you. That's 140 degrees and it's about two minutes or so. Who's that? Oh, hi Nicole, how are you? I know, right? My last minute decision to go live. I like got ready in like two minutes. Um, okay, and then soup. 
212 degrees this cooks too, and it cooks for a certain amount of time in the cycle. Heated puree, and which I did the other night for my sauce that I made, the hidden veggie, hidden veggie marinara sauce, cooked to 212 degrees, and it was about 20, 25 minutes to get, to get complete sauce from raw vegetables. I mean, I was blown away. Um, jam, another thing I can't wait to make, to make. It's just gonna be, you're gonna put your fruit in here, your sugar in here, your pectin, and you're done. For all, those, for all you people that do jam, I know some of you are jam makers, um, this, is like your new best friend for jam too, um, for can for other canning other stuff too, I imagine. And I don't know all those things. Um, and I'll pull up the um, the cookbook in a little while. And then sauce, and it cooks to 176 degrees. And then you have your custom blend, your custom heat, and your pulse cycle. So again, what I love about it is the safety feature. Is I have my hand in here right now. It's plugged in. It's turned on. I don't have to worry about it going on me or my daughter because this will not start unless you get this nice message that says you're ready to go that sound i call that sound ready to go um i just want to grab the cookbook over here um here's another great thing about pampered chef is um this blender of course comes with a cookbook and it just doesn't come with a cookbook it comes with basics of how to do things so it's not gonna like leave you in a lurch. Like I feel like I got this massive cookbook with my other blender and it was just a little bit overwhelming to get through. And so I just kind of stuck to smoothies and I made a soup once and that was about it. And um, I feel like the instruction level with Pampered Chef is really good. Um, in addition to like this little cookbook, um, Pampered Chef has amazing recipes on their website, whether you're a customer or not, that you can access at any time and you can you know, substitute your products for Pampered Chef products or whatever. Obviously, they're written with Pampered Chef products in mind, but the recipes are incredible. In fact, I have one client, she didn't know I was going live today. Um, she's always on, uh, on, with, um, on with my Pampered Chef stuff, and she's really supportive of me um, as a client and as a friend. Um, and she makes all her stuff from Pampered Chef. She's like a Pampered Chef guru. She has like hundreds and hundreds of products of Pampered Chef, and she just had a party with me in July and she earned $565 worth of free products. Um, and one of the things that she's getting is the air, air fryer and the air fryer she's getting because she's excited about doing the, um, the, the dehydrate um, to do like beef jerky and some other stuff she wanted to do. I can't remember, dried fruits. You can do you know, your fruits and all that stuff too. So for example, like when you're talking about smoothies, it tells you the recipe, not just how to make a smoothie, but the um, concept of how to make a smoothie. Um, I feel like once, in cooking especially, once you understand high level how to do things, then you go ahead and you don't use something you don't want to use and you substitute for what you want to use for what you like in your kitchen. Because I guarantee you that you're never going to see a recipe in mushrooms in my family because I don't like mushrooms. But you might like mushrooms. So you go ahead and use mushrooms and I'm going to use zucchini instead. Or I'm going to use... Um, you know, squash or something like that. I can't use um, I can't use eggplant either because my husband doesn't like eggplant and I don't like mushrooms. So mushrooms and zucchini are out. But that's what I mean. You just get you get the basic concepts of how to cook, and then you substitute for whatever your family likes. Never make anything that your family doesn't like because it's going to go to waste. And if you don't like it, especially, you have to love what you cook and feel good about it when you serve it to the table. That's definitely my philosophy of how I feel about it. If I don't love it, I can't sell it to my family. And basically you are selling your cooking to your family, especially your kids, um, you know, like as something that you're proud of and that you're excited to, for them to enjoy with you. So for example, smoothies are always, this is the recipe, a ratio, two cups of fruit, a cup of veggie, which is optional, and a half a cup of liquid. That's for your smoothie, okay? And then it gives you ideas for smoothie bowls and smoothies. And alternate milk, it tells you kind of the philosophy on how to um, how to make your milk and how long it takes. Um, and for grind, it's a three second cycle. It's a three minute cycle, and you can make butters, wheat berry flowers for pancakes, whole cinnamon sticks or granulated sugar into fine powders. So there's other uses to do this besides peanut butter. Hi Amanda, how are you? We're just kitchen talking today. So that's grind. Um, and then the soup setting. I mean, what I love about this blender is that it is a cooking blender. So it takes raw things 
in your fridge and turns them into sauces and jams and things like that. So you're actually not even putting them on the stove. You don't pre-cook them. You don't microwave them. You do all the work in this blender, which of course that means, oh my gosh, that's one less thing you have to clean it. By the way, you don't even have to clean it because it has a heated wash cycle. So that's just some highlights um, from the blender. Does anyone have any questions about the blender that I can answer? Okay. Uh, and then of course you have the custom blend and custom heat where you determine whatever heat you want it to be at and then determine a setting of what you want it to be at. And then it's gonna tell you how long it's gonna to take to cook to that temperature by that setting. So I'm gonna have a little bit of coffee because I haven't had my coffee yet. Um, so that's the blender. Oh, and then the wonderful thing about the blender, which I didn't show you guys, is the smoothie attachment. So yes, you can make smoothies in this blender jar, but I need to take that out in your catalog. Yeah, I need to mail you, I'll mail you a catalog, Nicole. Um, you need to have a party. You'd have so much fun with this. Um, and you're so good at it. So here's the smoothie attachment. So you take the glass top off and you put this attachment on and then you fill up your smoothie cup and it comes with instructions, you guys. Um, I don't know if you're like me, I'm not so good at following instructions. I'm trying to get better at it, but it tells you the order of how you should put things in here. And it says put ice, put fruits and veggies, put liquids and put a mix in. And then you're just gonna screw it on top, get that all in there. Screwing it on top is always the hardest part for me to do because I can't see to line it up and you wanna make sure it's lined up so you get a, you get a locked seal. Ah. And of course I have my contacts in so I'm not seeing very well to get it done. Okay, there we go. Nope, I have it off, I have it off kilter. This is like the hardest part of making a smoothie. Okay, there we go. Okay, so then you're just gonna put it on here and like anything else, it's not gonna operate until you lock it. And then you're gonna make a smoothie in like a minute. So that is just awesome. What are you doing? Honestly? I really should stop watching as I can't get this. I'm watching you. Oh, that's so sweet. Um, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get off the blender in a second and go into other things, but I just wanted to show that. And then when your blender's done, you're gonna choose your smoothie cycle, however long you wanna do it. It's about a minute to make a smoothie. If you, um, and it comes out pretty liquid. Um, if you get any chunks, like if you had some really big chunks or um, frozen chunks, then you would, um, I have this arm really tight now, which is how you want it to be. Um, and then you're just, take this off, put your, spoon, put your straw in, super long straw guys. And this is ready to go in the car. Oops, I put it on the wrong way. <laughs> it's, it's ready to go in the car with you because it fits into any standard cup holder in our, okay? So that's it for the blender. I just then show you this. It has a cup, protective cover case for the blade. Okay, and then you just slide it into its little um, attachment area and just get it out of the way, which I'm gonna do right now. Okay, next I'm gonna go through, um, and then there are other, oh sorry, and then our other big appliance is our quick cooker, which I don't have a quick cooker yet, but I'm going to speak to it because I do have an Instant Pot. And, I am not one to uh, talk poorly about any products lines, but we all know what an Instant Pot is, so I can't really hide the fact that I have an Instant Pot. Here's what's different about our quick cooker, and this is why I'm going to get one once I convince my husband that um, <laughs> we're duplicating appliances because he doesn't understand, but I'm the one that's in the kitchen and I'm the one that's using these, and if I believe that a product is going to save me time and make my job easier in the kitchen, because my goal with the kitchen is in, and out. I love being in the kitchen, but I don't want to be here. The longer I'm in the kitchen, if it's longer than two to three hours, I become unhappy because I'm just spending too much time in the kitchen. Unless I'm doing cooking like something I really love, like pasta or something like that, that takes a long time. But there's no reason for me to be in the kitchen. There's never any reason for you to be in the kitchen for two to three hours for cooking a meal for your family. You can get in and out faster. So when I think about this quick cooker, what I think about it, what my current quick cooker does not have, um, is the safety features. For one, I have to make sure that my daughter is nowhere near that, that the pot because the design of the pot isn't very smart. In fact, when you open up the steam valve to let steam release from the pressure cooker, you're supposed to use a spoon, that's what's recommended, and step away from it, okay? So our quick cooker has a, has a button that you push 
that you actually push. So you're not touching the steam. Okay, so there's that. Also with the, um, with the Instant Pot, the readouts are just decimal readouts. I don't know what you call that. LCD? Yeah. So is it LCD or LED? I can't remember. Um, anyway, they're not this beautiful blue color that our quick cooker is, that you can see very clearly where you are in your cycle. Um, and I love the blue color that we use in all our products. There's a reason why we use blue, and it's because people really like blue. People don't like red. Red freaks us out. People don't like black. They have a hard time seeing black. People like blue because it calms you when you're cooking. So all of our ele electrics have that blue kind of tone to them with, their, with, the, um, with the readouts. So, and this quick cooker has 16 presets. Okay, so my Instant Pot is eight, eight or nine, something like that, not 16. Um, and this, I guess, and the, it also has something else that my uh, Instant Pot doesn't have. It has nice handles that I can move it around. Um, with my Instant Pot, I have to kind of grab it and manipulate it and shove it, and it, it's sort of a pain. Um, so it just is a nicer looking product also. If you were to have it on your counter, it's a nice looking product. That's also what I love about Pampered Chef. I love that their products just look beautiful. Okay, so that's the quick cooker. Next, I'm gonna talk about cast, um, the cast iron because cast iron's amazing and I've fallen in love with cast iron. Um, so I'm gonna grab my cast iron out here. And I'm gonna tell you that I have, um, I've never had this kind of cast iron before, I'll put it that way. So what I love about our cast iron is that it is a non-stick surface, a non-stick surface, and it's already pre-seasoned, so you don't have to season it. So how do you clean this thing? Okay, here's the crazy thing, which I can't believe this because I clean everything in my house with soap and water because I think that's the way to do it. But with our cast iron, you are using hot water and a pan scraper. And I'm telling you right now, this pan scraper will get everything off that you need to get off. And when you're done cooking with it, um, you're gonna make sure that's completely dry because cast iron is, um, cast iron is a little bit, the two things about cast iron is it's gonna be a little bit heavier and that you wanna make sure that it's dry because you don't want it to rust because it is iron, it's cast iron. So you need to make sure it's completely dry. For me, what I do with my cast iron, and this was a tip that was given to me from actually Pampered Chef and some other people, is I put it on the stove when it's done for just like a minute or so and let it completely dry out. And then I just take canola oil and I oil it. So it's always back to its shiny new brightness. And um, I've made, in my cast iron so far since I've had it, I've made um, peach cobbler in the small one. What else did I make in the small one? I made most of my stuff in the big one. I've made, um, I've made tri-tip twice. I've made, oh, I made cooking kits in here. Like I've made um, chicken chow mein and, um, and I made shrimp pad thai in here. Um, and I've made um, uh, the frittata I made on Monday in here too. So I've made, and I've made other things too. I can't think off the top of my head what else I've made. I've cooked in it quite a bit. And the smaller one I just haven't used as much because I think that's mostly for smaller portions and I'm always kind of cooking for my, with my family and mine and having leftovers because I like to have leftovers. But you can use this easily for, you know, all your desserts. Um, smaller portion things like your individual pizzas. We have good recipes for that. And again, all these recipes are on Pamper Chef website, so it's amazing. Um, it's an amazing resource, Pamper Chef's website um, for recipes. If you just go to my link and then you go to recipes, you'll find all the recipes for Pamper Chef there. Okay, I'm gonna have a sip of my coffee. Mm. Did I put sugar in it? I did not, okay. So this is my little sugar bowl from Poland. It's one of my treasured items in my kitchen. So I, um, this, I love this too. I love the shaker. So what I love about the shaker is, um, I always thought about, I, my grandmother had a shaker like this, not exactly like this, but it was flat and it brings back such wonderful memories um, for me because my grandmother was an amazing cook and um, cook and baker. Um, and she made all these um, Eastern European delights. Like she made these beignet donuts that were just out of this world and she would always dust them with powdered sugar. My grandma's been passed away since 1998, a long time, but her influence with me in the kitchen was just um, none, none other in my life. I mean, I, as a child, would watch her roll out the dough by hand and know all these recipes in her heart, in her, in her, in her head by hand. And when she passed away, 
she took all her recipes with her because she didn't really write anything down. Um, and when I started cooking, I really didn't even start cooking until like in my late thir in my mid thirties, maybe my late thirties. I just started cooking from like um, from just like emotion and intention and just for any other reason um, not to follow a recipe. I would just get in the kitchen and I would do stuff and I felt like my grandmother's spirit was in me. It's a true story. And when I thought about um, cooking, I thought about what a loss it was that I don't have any of my grandmother's recipes, that they were all in her head. And that's why I started creating a website where I started taking pictures of everything because I could visually see in my mind what my grandmother was making, but I didn't know exactly what it was. And I thought if I could see it, I could recreate it. So I started taking pictures of everything I would cook because I wanted to make sure that I had a legacy someday. If somebody wanted to cook like me, they would know how to do it or get an idea to do it step by step. And it turns out I do have a legacy. I have a daughter. And so I started my website, Jen Marie Cuisine, in 2014 for that purpose. And then I, um, I just turned it into you know something more as time came along and added more recipes to it or more pictures to it. Um, and I just started doing videos recently because I was like, I'm never gonna do a video, that's crazy. But um, anyway, so that's my story about the powdered sugar thing. But um, anyway, this is cocoa. But what I love about these little shakers that um, Pampered Chef has is they're not just good for like powdered sugar. You can use them for flour, like when you're baking, which is so efficient because if you think about the mess you get when you bake, you take your hands in the flour and you splash it all across, use this instead. In fact, I'm gonna get like one more of these at least because I want one for my cocoa because I like cocoa and my coffee in the morning. And I'm gonna get one for my flour just so like when I bake so that my daughter can have some fun, create some fun memories with this too because I feel like cooking, especially with my daughter, is a memory that we're building together and I just love that. That's why I love, I think that's part of the reason why I love cooking because I have such strong memories of um, cooking with my grandmother when I would go to her house. It just really impacted my life. Mm. And my mom's memories too. Like, you know, my mom um, made great, my mom makes great soups and she always made us dinners. We always had dinner at the table. I'm from five children. Um, and there was always three or five of us around because I'm the oldest and the youngest is, um, is 18 years younger than me. So there were always all these kids around the table and my mom always makes sure um, and mom, if you're watching, I don't think you are, but you'll see this later. It's actually my mom's birthday today. So happy birthday, mom. Uh, my memories too of growing up, my good memories of growing up are being at the table and sitting around the table eating dinner as a family. And my mom always going out of her way to make that feel special. Um, so I digress a little bit, but I think this is important because I feel like what's happened in our world is we've gotten away from the table. And with um, everything that's happened with shelter in place and all the challenges that have happened with it, it's bringing people more to the table. And we as moms, or as the main person who cooks in the family, whether that be a dad or a mom, are spending more time in the kitchen. Um, at one point I was starting to feel like a waitress and a, you know, a, waitress and a, and a cook instead of you know the mom and the wife bringing dinner to the table. And I think that transformation in my head um, with Pampered Chef has helped too because I'm having more fun with it and I'm enjoying it more and I'm figuring out how to make it a lot more um, enjoyable for my family with these tools. So, um, so that's, uh, mm, that's my whole why of why I choose Joy in the Kitchen and how I've purposely transformed the kitchen into a joyful place versus a place that I was starting to dread and not be happy in. And things like cast iron, and a blender and stoneware and new knives and better utensils and um, better chopping, um, better things to chop and slice with and better things to bake with with my daughter are making it just a lot more fun for me. So I'm gonna put these away here and I'm gonna talk about our knives. So when I talk about our knives, I have to talk about the fact that I won these knives, okay? So I won these knives for selling $5,000 worth of Pampered Chef stuff and stuff, <laughs> tools, kitchen products. And I started with Pampered Chef May 22nd. And I won these knives in the end of June or early July. I think it was right, I think it was the end of June is when I earned them, is when I earned them. So in a very short amount of time, um, because people are spending so much more time in the kitchen and there's been a rejuvenation in Pampered Chef, the company, I was able to earn every single award, reward rather, not award, reward 
um, for my sales up to these knives. And the things that I won, oh, by the way, I won those cast iron pans. Those were free. Um, I won the ceramic egg cooker and the mini skinny scraper. That was my first one for hitting 250 in sales, I think it was. Um, I won this nonstick pan with removable handle. Remove the handle. The handle is, is um, removed, so you can put this pan into the stove, from the stove top into the oven. So yeah, those are the things I won. Um, and then on top of that, <clears throat> on top of all those things that I won, which I was super excited about, I'm gonna leave this pan out because I'm gonna talk about it, um, you know, the knives. I also won um, two big, huge boxes that are in my, um, in my hallway here of fall products for free. So the new fall line that's coming out, I've won 75% of it almost, yeah, by just selling for two months in Pamper Shop, which is like amazing. I, I don't know the last time anyone's given me anything for free. Like never, I'm gonna say, pretty much never. I, um, I worked in corporate for 27 years and I never got anything for free. I either got a bonus, um, but I got nothing shipped to my door that was like something that felt like Christmas to me that was gonna help me in my home. So, um, so those are the things I got for free. Sorry, I have my coffee here. And so let me talk about these knives because I just love these knives. And I had beautiful knives. I'm gonna go through the catalog here so I make sure I don't miss any features on them. I had beautiful knives that I loved. They were French and they were German made and I thought they were really good. But honestly, they weren't that great because I would drop them. I mean, I cut myself on them and they were really hard to cut with, which I just thought, oh, I just need to get them sharpened and they'll be fine. But there's a big difference, you guys, between the knife block set that you got at your wedding or that you got at your first apartment um, that you haven't changed up for 15 to 20 years. And that's the technology of the knife, which is pretty basic. So I'll start off with our chef's knife. This is an eight inch knife. And don't be intimidated by the chef's knife because that's all about how you handle it. So you wanna make sure that you're handling it the right way and it becomes a phenomenal tool in your kitchen. So it is fully forged German steel. So it's one piece of steel all the way across, okay? This is the tip here, this is the edge. And then it has a bolster here where you lay your thumb comfortably, whether you're a left-hander or a right-hander, you could still lay your thumb on either side and then you put your forefinger across here and then you're in a great chopping position because you want to have kind of a rocking motion when you're chopping. Now, I am not a chef. This is what I've learned from Pampered Chef. So um, how to do things properly, which has been super helpful for me, which is also helping with my efficiency in the kitchen. So when you're shop chopping, you're kind of going like this. It's a rocking motion. Our, our knives are made of Paca wood which is known for its versatility and um, comfort. These knives just feel nice in your hand, okay? Um, and, oh, full tang for strength and perfect balance. I always forget the tang. Full tang across, okay? It goes all the way from the edge all the way to the tip of the knife, from the base of the knife all the way to the tip. Okay, so that's our chef's knife. So that's your... I would say if you want to have one knife in your house and if you're okay with a chef's knife, get a chef's knife because that will do 90% of what you need to do. If you're a little hesitant about a chef's knife, look at a Santuco knife. Now, I didn't even know that this knife, like, what it was called or that it existed or the importance of it until I started with Pamper Chef either. But a Santuco knife is a five inch knife and it just fits so comfortably in your hand. I mean, you could see like, it's like, you know, I'm going like this, which you know, you don't want to do when people are around you. But it's super easy to cut with, and it's a beautiful knife, and that comes with it, the set. Your utility knife. Now we have two kinds. We also have coated utility coated knives. I'll go through those in a second. But this is the utility knife, which almost looks like a steak knife, but this can do so many jobs for you in the kitchen that you need to get done, like cutting open um, things, um, packaging, um, cutting small things because it's serrated. Even you could use it for your breads if you want to cut your bread. And this is a um, paring knife, which is three inches. So this is for, you know, if you wanted to peel things with your knife or you wanted to pop some avocado out, um, that kind of thing is what a paring knife is for. 
And then this knife that I didn't even know about either is the tomato knife. And it's got a super thin um, blade at the end, so it's good for cutting like in small, uh, thin slices. And also, you, it comes with kitchen shears, which I love these kitchen shears. You can cut through chicken with these shears, okay? And they come apart nicely for easy cleaning. Um, and I have two other knives that have not arrived yet. I have an eight inch bread knife that's coming and, oh, and then, I, and then I have a honing tool that's coming too. So the knife set that we offer that I talked about the other day um, comes with the knife block and you can see just how beautiful and significant this is on your counter. I mean, it's just a gorgeous piece to even have on your counter. And that's what I love about our products too is they are built with aesthetics in mind. Uh, I don't know about you, but I can't stand ugly stuff in my kitchen. If it's ugly, I don't want it. So the fact that I specifically pick out things from my kitchen that are gonna be aesthetically pleasing um, gives me a nice feeling about Pamper Chef because I feel like they go even extra to make sure that it's a talk piece. And when people see it, they're like, gosh, your knife lock is so beautiful. Look at that wood, wow. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Um, this is our coated knife. So our coated knives would be great for your, um, for if you're on your, um, for things when you're um, on the go, like in your camper, on your boat, um, when you're going on trips, we have a great coated utility knife set. I think it's like $75. And this is the utility knife um, that's one of those pieces. And in the, in the coated set, um, it's also good for like people that are getting their first apartment, college students. You always wanna have a set of knives around. And they're fun because they're colored, like the chef knife's a blue color. The paring knife is, um, is orange. Um, tomato knife is red. We've actually offered that as specials, um, which I'll get into. Um, Pampered Chef offers um, a gift of, if you purchase with them, um, $80, if you purchase $80 or more with them, they send you a free gift. Now, this is why I was kind of like, a gift. I was just gonna say, I don't know also anybody who offers me a free gift anytime I buy something either, because I buy from Amazon all the time and they never give me anything for free. So I love that we offer um, free gifts to people. And in fact, this was my free gift um, when I had a party, um, which was awesome. Okay, so there's the knives. So I'm just gonna talk about our nonstick really quick. I'm gonna pull up the catalog here. So for our nonstick, we offer um, we offer loads of options with it. We have a whole set that is an eight-inch nonstick fry pan, a ten-inch nonstick fry pan, and a twelve-inch nonstick fry pan, uh, which is great because that just kind of has you has you all covered for all the um, all your nonstick needs. But one of the things that I got that I was super excited about, looking for the nonstick in here, I think it just must be here. I love our catalog. It's just such a gorgeously laid out, beautiful catalog. Oh, here's nonstick, got it. So this is our nonstick line. I'm gonna show you a couple things that I have so far um, because I don't have any nonstick because I t tend to believe that nonstick doesn't really, non it is never nonstick. Um, and our nonstick actually really is nonstick. So I have made, and you probably, you haven't seen me do this yet, but I've made eggs in here. I call them cheesy eggs for my daughter. Um, I don't use any butter, I don't use any oil, and they just slide off the pan, so that's amazing. And what I love about our nonstick cookware is the removable handle option. So you could take the handle off, and then this can go within your, in your stove, from your stove top to your oven top. And our uh, nonstick um, cookware is dishwasher safe, which is amazing. Another feature about our nonstick cookware is that the coating's so tough, you can even use metal utensils, and it's PFOA free. So you don't have to worry about ever damaging and getting um, bad things into your food based on how you treat your cookware because it's built to the task, which is amazing, which is just incredible. Um, I have this pan, which is the eight inch, which I won. And then I told the story about this, but I'll tell it again. Um, this was the real reason why I went to a paper chef party. Two reasons actually, um, was to get a nine quart stock pot. And why I love this pot, it's, this is called a, this is called a multi-pot. It's nonstick, and you can do a lot more in here than just your pasta. So you can do your chili in here, your soups in here, uh, your ribs in here. You can do a lot in here because um, it has that same coating that all our nonstick has. It comes with a beautiful glass lid. 
that you can see in. And it makes it really easy to pour stuff out of the pot um, and see what's in the pot. And the lid licks, locks on nicely too. Um, what I also got when I got this pot, which is this is like my dream combination right here, is I bought this steamer colander slash strainer. And what I love about it is the silicone, it can go, again, it goes into the dishwasher, but it pops out like this, and you could steam your vegetables in here, or as I did in my cooking demonstration, I put my water in here and then I just threw my pasta in when the water was boiled, and I didn't have to go to the sink to empty it out, I just kind of tipped it over to let the water release and got my pasta out and saved myself a step. And then when I'm done, I just kind of fold it back up and put it back. So that's that. The other non-stick item I have <clears throat> is um, I got the griddle. I make pancakes for my daughter at least once a week. And I had a griddle that was non-stick, but it was not non-stick at all. It was like, no, it was not non-stick. My pancakes would stick, it'd be a frustrating experience. It was just overall just a negative thing. So I got this non-stick griddle, let me tell you, you don't even have to put oil or butter on it and your pancakes are gonna come flying off just so easily, it's amazing. Um, so those are the non-stick items that I have so far. I wanna get the 12 inch non-stick skillet because I really need that. Um, and also we have stainless steel non-stick and so for that one, I would like to get probably either, either the 12 inch or I want to get the, um, the wok, uh, which is a beautiful product too. And I can't even believe that there's such a thing called stainless steel nonstick. So basically with our stainless steel nonstick, the nonstick um, has a grid that makes the pan ideal for browning meat, searing fish, sauteing veggies, stuff like that. Um, but also you can do your pan sauces and your gravy in it too. So it's almost like a combination, you know, like when I think of searing, I think of cast iron. And that's also what you wanna do with your stainless steel. We have a really good cooking um, quiz on our website. Um, what kind of pans do I need? Um, I'm gonna send you, the, I'll put the link up there with that so you can kind of take a look at that. And it kind of takes you through, do you need nonstick? Do you need stainless steel? Do you need cast iron? The last one I'm gonna talk about is one that I cooked with, is the Rock Crock. Where's my Rock Crock? Oh, <laughs> my Rock Crock's in the refrigerator. I forgot it has cake in it. And isn't that wonderful? My rock crock can go right in the refrigerator after I'm done cooking with it. So I've got cake in it right now because I made a lot of cake this week. I made two cakes. Um, but this is the rock crock. Let me tell you about the rock crock um, because it is another amazing product. It can withstand temperatures up to 752 degrees. Now, I don't know if you've ever cooked at 752 degrees before. I don't think I have. But this allows you to be able to put it in the broiler and on your grill. So um, it's great for those purposes. So if you're going to a picnic and you wanna warm food up and pop it on the grill, this is what you do with it. Um, not the lid, the lid only goes up to 450 degrees, but the pot itself is made of this gorgeous um, clay, fire glazed clay, which makes it super easy to clean, but it can go on the grill, the stove top, the broiler, the oven, and the microwave. So literally I made this cake, I don't know if you saw it the other day, but. I made this cake in the microwave, and that just blows my mind away too, because I don't know of any of my cookware that can go in the microwave. That can go in the, grill, in the broiler and the grill, on the grill top. And it also serves as a, um, as a slow cooker. So with this particular um, pot, you can, uh, you can get the um, slow cook um, stand, and then you have a slow cooker. So if you're like me, this is what I was thinking. I have, well, my husband had a slow cooker, and I had a slow cooker, so now we can't decide which slow cooker we're gonna get rid of, so we kept both, because you never know, you might have a party and want both. But I was like, well, what do I need either of them for? Because this actually is a slow cooker too. So it can slow cook and it can cook in the microwave, in the grill, on the broiler, and all those other places. What else do I need it for? So that's the Rock Crock. And the Rock Crock, when you get the Rock Crock, it comes with this amazing recipe book of dishes that you can make. So it gives you ideas. I mean, that's what I love about Pamper Chef too. It gives you so many ideas um, of um, things you can cook easily for your family. One pot meals is what this is all about. Okay, so that's the rock crop. And then I'm just gonna go over a little bit on our stoneware, because our stoneware mm, is so amazing. And the funny thing about our stoneware is that 
when I was going to this Pampered Chef party, I was like, I think I have some Pampered Chef stuff in my kitchen. And it turns out I had four items. So the stoneware was one of them. And the other one was, which I demoed, I think, um, was the food chopper. Oh, you can't see that probably. Let me show you. Food chopper. And I had the pizza cutter. And I had a mix and pour, which is a salad dressing uh, device. And has all these recipes on it, which has now been, um, which now, which has now been redesigned. So I had those four items. And I never really thought about how amazing this stoneware is because I got all these four items in 2007. Oh, you can't see. Mix and pour, food chopper, pizza cutter, and pizza stone. And you can see my pizza stone is nice and dark, which means it's got a lot of love to it. The darker your stoneware is, the more color it has, the more it's been used. So I'm just gonna talk about our stoneware for a few minutes. And gosh, it looks like I'm using up this whole hour. I guess I got the gift to the gap this morning. So I'm gonna talk about this large bar pan um, because this is your everyday go-to pan for cooking. You can cook your one pan meals, your one, um, yeah, one pan meals in here. Like for example, I cooked a fish and some vegetables on here. I cooked um, some, some um, sausage and some vegetables on here. It cooks phenomenal bacon. I did a demo for you on bacon the other day. Um, your bacon will never be the same. You'll never think of bacon the same once you cook it on this pan because it cooks flat. And the thing about, and it cooks crisp. So the, the thing about our stoneware is that it heats evenly across the surface. So you never have to flip anything. So if you were cooking burgers, which I haven't done yet, but I'm going to do, I would cook my burgers on here and I would never flip them. My bacon, I never flip it. My vegetables, I never flip it. My french fries, I never flip them. So I'm avoiding all those things that can happen with splatters and burns and also time. Cause I, you know, when you've got to flip stuff, you've got to keep going back and forth to the oven. So you can't do other things. So that, so that's the large bar pan. The pizza stone, you will never have a crisper pizza than on a pizza stone. There's just something about it that just makes the, cr the crust just so crunchy and delicious. Um, okay, here's a funny thing. I didn't even know we had this, but my, um, my husband's mother passed away um, in 2016 and we earned a lot of her kitchen products. And I kept, and I, I totally forgot that we had kept this one. But this is actually from uh, my mother-in-law and it's a legacy. Now it's even more of a legacy piece. Um, and that's also what um, Pampered Chef is too. Like these are legacy pieces. Like this stoneware is from 2007. I don't know when she bought this piece of stoneware, but it is super special to me. I've actually made French fries in it recently. And um, every time I'm gonna use this piece of stoneware, I'm gonna be thinking about her because this stoneware is a legacy piece from, from, from my mother, my passed away mother-in-law. and. Um, of course she had Pamper Chef because she loved going to parties and she loved shopping and stuff like that too. So this is one of the pieces from her collection. And that's a perfect piece for your um, for a small pizza. It's a little bit bigger than the other stone for a deep dish pizza. And then, um, so that is unglazed. So I think my sister was asking me, what's the difference between glazed and unglazed stoneware? So all this is unglazed. And the thing about this unglazed um, stoneware and, and glazed stoneware is you take it right from the oven and put it to the table, no problem at all. It's gorgeous, it serves nice, and because the heat distributes evenly, it also things stay warm longer. So your food will actually stay warm longer when you serve it to the table. But this is an example of our glazed, um, our glazed stoneware. It looks like I got some yogurt on here or something when my yogurt exploded that one day. So this is an example of our glazed stoneware. So this is the small, I think this is the tiny baker, the small baker, tiny baker. Um, and your stoneware can also go into the toaster oven and the microwave too. The fridge and the freezer, but that's it for right now. And then this is the medium size baker and that's the, the glazed. So that's the difference between the unglazed and the glazed. Um, no difference in cooking or performance, just um, texture differences on the outside. So if you are one of those people that wants to have fancy stuff out when you entertain, these are your entertaining pieces. I got for a wedding gift set. Oh, hi, Christine. So um, the fun thing about Pampered Chef is I went to this party in, uh, in uh, May in Michigan. Oh, then here's, let me show you this one more thing. 
this is a really big one. This is the big cover baker. I don't even know if we sell this exact one anymore. But you can, you can see what you can make in this. You can make, oh my gosh, so many things for a big party in here. And it's gonna cook up fantastic. And because the stoneware um, cooks evenly, you also don't need to, usually, typically, you don't need to oil it or treat it. It's already, you know, it's already ready to go. And the more you use it, the more non-stick the surface is, because it is non-stick. And it cooks just wonderfully. Like, you'll have the crispest crust, the crunchiest vegetables, um, you know, the moistest fish. It's just amazing. Um, anyway, Christine is on here. And Christine is the person that brought me in a Pampered Chef. So I went to a Pampered Chef party, you guys, that my friend threw, uh, my friend from 1988, we worked together at Cedar Point in, um, in Ohio. We were, we were both in college in Michigan. And she invited me to a Pampered Chef party. And I was, went to this party, I'm just gonna, I only have a few more minutes to go. And I was like, oh my gosh, Pampered Chef, I have Pampered Chef stuff in my kitchen. And I've had it a long time. And that's when I pulled out those four items. I was like, oh my gosh, that's all Pampered Chef. And I didn't even know that we had this. So this is just a total bonus from my mother-in-law and she invited me to this party and I was at this party and I was having a good time and I needed this you know this specific pot and I wanted a, um, a baker's rack and oh and I wanted this tool that Michael Simon inspired me to get because I was watching him do lives during during shelter in place for 52 days and he had this scraper and I saw Pampered Chef had one so I went to this party with no intention other than just getting a couple things that I needed that I didn't want to spend a ton of money on because I have La Crusade and that's pretty expensive. And I was like, yeah, La Crusade is, is great. And I love it. I have a lot of La Crusade, but um, it's just not as practical for my family at this point. So I just don't, you know, I, I don't need any more. I need stuff that's easier, nonstick, you know, stuff that's going to be easy to clean, easy to move around. Anyway, so um, Christine was the consultant at this party and I was at this party and I was like, hey, I love the kitchen. I love to cook. I'm getting back into it again. I'm feeling better about it. You know what? I don't think I've seen Pampered Chef around here in Reno that much. And I don't even know if anyone even thinks Pampered Chef is still around. I'm going to jump in. So literally my first party, you guys, was how I launched my business. I didn't know how this business would work. I didn't know how much money I'd make. I didn't know um, anything about the company except that I knew I had these four products I had a long time for. So for me, as a marketing a marketer for 27 years, to me that made brand that meant brand trust and integrity, and I didn't know how it would all work out. But I'm telling you right now, it was the best decision I ever made because it was this decision that came from my heart um, that I love to cook, that I love to help people, and that I saw this huge transformation in my kitchen, and I wanted to share that joy with other people. So that's why I'm here today. Christine is the person that brought me into the company and I'm trying to bring more people into the company. So I'd love to talk to you about hosting a party. I do all the work for you if it's a virtual party and, um, and the business opportunity because it's a great business opportunity for you to make supplemental income for your family. And it's one that will just feel good in your kitchen. Like you're actually gonna transform your kitchen, you guys. And there's not many businesses in the world that you can say are really impacting not only your home and your family, but everyone else's. And those are the things that I absolutely love about being a Pampered Chef Independent Consultant. So I'm gonna wrap up here. I can see that I'm at my time. It's 9.59, I actually used every single second of my time with having no idea what to say today or no plan. I thank you for joining me. I thank you for joining me this week. Um, and please ask me any questions at any time. I'm here, I'm local in Reno. I'd love to work with you. I'd love to come into your home and throw parties. If we throw a party in your home, I follow all the CDC guidelines, mask on, gloves, social distancing, all that. And people still have a really great time, and so do I, because I just love to interact with people. And virtual parties, on the other hand, are all online. I do all the work for you. You just join in, invite your friends, and collect the free rewards of earning products and discounts on products. And um, as far as the business opportunity, you take it where you want to take it, and you do it how you want to do it. It's all about you. This business is all about you. So again, thanks you guys. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and thanks for joining in my kitchen. I'll talk to you later. Bye.